Colombia's gayest duo, the Sons of Idiot. <laughs> I think we're I think we're the world's gayest duo. Guys, welcome to this week's podcast. I'm number forty nine? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Forty nine, lucky lucky forty nine. Nothing beats that. Got some time C. Actually, because think about it, forty nine is seven times seven. It is not. Yeah, it is. Hey, it's Tom C. Mathematician. Not good at math. <laughs> Guys, D Mark's it, over here. I'm gonna get a calculator real quick. Alright. I can't I, I don't know be, enough about numbers to dispute this yet. Surprised. Don't know. I don't have enough numbers to dispute this yet. Well, let's just find out. Yeah, it's 49. Good. All good. Right. Doesn't get much luckier than Which that. Which encyclopedia did you use? I want you to cite your sources. Actually, you know, it would be more lucky if you had 7 times 7 times 7. Darn. So as soon as we get to episode, let's find out. 7 times 7 times 7. That'd be 343. Lucky. That's going to be a lucky episode. You can't beat it. Guys, but welcome. But then what happens when we get to seven? another 7 after that? It's absolutely the most lucky. That's true. Guys, anyway, guys yeah. I'm Tom C. That's D. Marks. What's up? In your video world. Guys, so it shouldn't be surprising what we're talking about today. What? Guys, as you know, you know, that game came out. The one we kept talking about for months. And how much we wanted to play it. Finally. Yeah, My Little Pony. Peggle 2. Oh, right. Sorry. They both came out this week. Yeah. And they're both better than expected. Guys, I'm just kidding. Who cares about your dumb hobbies? I'm talking about real men's games. Talking about real, we're talking about non-dumb hobbies. Talking about making podcasts for money. No, that's not what we're talking about. Never, we have no experience in that, guys. Zero. So here's the deal, guys. As you know, Bioshock somehow actually came out. Unbelievable. It was not delayed again. Pass, pass, shocking all expectations. Pass me if you're hearing this, we did it. We <laughs> but, finally made it. By not being delayed a 700th time. No, it's funny because they actually mentioned that at one point. They actually make a joke on that at one point in the game. Really? Yeah, when you get to uh, the one the one uh, Battleship Bay, Elizabeth's like, oh, it's the new Duke and Dimwit. I heard it was delayed like three times. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, it makes me laugh. Guys, here's the deal. So as you may have seen in your downloads list, we've also done a spoiler cast. Now, that to us means where we're going to talk about anything in the story. Yeah. Specifically the endings and stuff. But here's the deal. When I was uh, about this game... You were a young boy. When I was a young person last year, I decided that I was going to basically keep myself almost entirely in the dark about this game. You did that with something else, too. I did it with a lot of things. But this one I was really actually good at. Like, I really didn't look anything up. Uh, like, I didn't watch... Like, I watched a couple videos, but, like, really not much. Like, I didn't, like, uh, check for any, like, new information or new trailers. The only thing I ever watched was the Heavy Hitters video, which ended up being not that important. But, um... Guys, I, I didn't want to know that much about because I wanted to just experience it. We all watched the trailer with the song Beast in it. We all did that. That was something we all did. No one could avoid that because that song's rad and it was a great trailer. And so that's I'm basically as much as I got. I'm nodding silently in approval. I know. So, uh, guys. They can't hear me. That's why I said it. Oh, yeah. But can we get like a nodding noise or something? Can uh, you maybe put like uh, a... Uh, 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 dude, can you get like a like a like maybe a rocking chair in your neck? Uh, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? All yeah. right. And so I kept myself in the dark, guys, and my hype, did a lot of tripping. hype a level lot of was still pretty high for the game when it came out. And here's the thing, guys. We're not going to talk about story at all here. We're talking about gameplay. We're talking about how we feel, man. Oh, and a hey. review of sorts. Guys, here's the deal. Tom, what's the deal? Uh, it's better than I could have ever expected it to be. I never, ever, ever thought it would be this good. Like, I was like, it's going to be good. It'll probably be as good as Bioshock 1. Far superior to Bioshock 1 in every single way. Really? It is. What, are you kidding me? It's I, a million times better. I was just asking. It's it's like every second they delayed it shows, and the game is so good, I can't even... Like, I when I first started playing the game, I was like, well, this just looks unbelievable. It's really good looking, and I like everything that's going on. Then I continued to play it, and I was like... There's nothing bad here yet. What's, what's wrong with this? <laughs> Everything's still going great. And then I beat the game. I'm like, wow. That was way, way more than I could have ever expected from this. Like, you may have had twists at some point where Luke, I am your father or some crap. But this game is just getting there. Like, it's 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 tight. It's contained while still being open. It's got everything you ever want. There's no flaws in the game itself. You could, you could, you have people who are saying bad writing and they're wrong and they should be killed by people us. People who say two, two gun limit, that's wrong. That's stupid. They should give up on life for now and forever. There's also some people who might say 
something. What were they going to say? Oh, they might say it's too easy. And that's true. It's a little easy. It's easy, but it's not. there are some challenging parts, and you can make it harder if you want. But I, I like a game that's less challenging sometimes because you're not you're not even in the Bioshock completely for well, the, the thing, gameplay. Well, well, the thing, yeah, the thing of it is that if it was too it's difficult, it would thing. distract from the, it would distract from the story. And but you'd be yeah. like, you'd, you'd be like, man, I can't believe I finally got done with that boss fight. Oh, I didn't hear what anyone just said because I was complaining about how hard that boss fight was. <laughs> but especially if you're incredibly vocal to yourself while you're playing video. Man, games. this sucks. <laughs> so the thing is, guys, I bet you're talking over the podcast right now. People like those. Yeah, they're like, man, they're going on with this game. The guy's uh, calling me out. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's a little, it's a little easy at times. Normal playthrough was pretty easy. I only died maybe three times at most. Yeah, and you're you're re- recip- re- reciprocated, resuscitated for virtually no cost. Oh uh, well, uh, t- to be fair, uh, I had uh, glued to my feet the one uh, item that was whenever you're low on health and you kill a dude, you get more health. Yeah, I, I pretty much had that on the entire game. I had that as soon as I got because it. Because that's an assessment. Pro tip about that, those are randomly generated. I know. That's cool. Um, so anyway, what I'm saying is I can't believe how good it was, and I don't care that there was a delay now that I'm here in the future, and yeah, I, that, I no longer have to be delayed anymore. That was a rough delay. Um, uh, it's just like, okay, now I, I don't – is it fair for me to compare it to Bioshock 1? Of course it is. Is it wrong for me to say it's better than it? No. Now, may I have some nostalgia goggles on? Maybe. But I'm not wrong. Because well, I, can, I can see myself in the future through the multiverse. And guess what? I was right back then now, here. Well, the thing of it is, is that, like, a lot of people... Obviously, the comparisons to this game... I talked for, like, six minutes straight there. You see that? I know. That's why I had to speak up. <laughs> the comparisons between this game and, Bi- and the first Bioshock are warranted. But the thing is that, like... You definitely got the feel from this game that uh, Ken Levine, who was basically like the creative mind behind both the, uh, Bioshock 1 and Bioshock Infinite, not so much 2, you really get the idea that Ken Levine did want to take the game in a different direction. He wanted to stay with the theme. Oh, excuse me. He wanted Jeez. to stay, stay with. I got a little science thing. He wanted to stay with the theme of Bioshock, which is kind of explained in the game about how there's a city. And it's like wondrous and stuff, and there's a bunch of bad stuff going on. He obviously wanted to keep it that theme, which is what kind of defines the Bioshock series. But they don't necessarily have to be tied together by the same timeline, play styles, protagonists, things like that. They don't have to be a continuing series. Kind of like, like, one way, and, like one and two, it doesn't have to be like that. Kind of like the way Grand Theft Auto games works. They're all Grand Theft Auto games, but one, you're Nico Bellic, and one, you're probably some black guy. Yeah. So, that, those are those two weren't in the same place though. Oh, they were. No. One, the, okay, that, it, it, it's it's far from the point. But because because you're talking about San Andreas, which happened in obviously California, and the oh. other one's Liberty Liberty City. But well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Whatever. So they don't have to be same city, same time. Let's say anything. They could not even exist in the same in the same universe. Uh, that for all, point for is all you know that point is heavily. Uh, uh, it's shown in the game. Yeah. So that's why I feel when I see this game. Thing is, guys, I heard a lot of people complaining about that this game was not the game that was presented to us in the original gameplay demos. Who that said that? People online. Qu- a quick question. Are they the stupid people? No, because the thing is, they're not wrong. This game is very different from the one from the original release demos that were sent out like two or three years ago, back when they first talked about this game. Um... Like I don't even I don't I don't even know if I was around for that. Was I alive back then? Po- possibly. I know yeah. I remember pretty vividly a lot of the stuff they talked about. How um, the kind of stuff that Elizabeth could do in combat, the fact that vigors and tonics were actually limited use items, and they kind of, and they well obviously they went away from that because they were just it's basically the Eve bar like it was in Bi- in the first Bioshock games. Yeah. And Elizabeth's role in combat is very much reduced because ooh, excuse me in the trailer. Like, she could make a rain cloud above people, and you could zap it, and it would kill a bunch of people. She could uh, tear down bridges. She could uh, create a superheated pan ball and throw at people. Yeah. So there's a lot of different stuff that that was changed as far as that goes. Uh, it's basically all changed in a far cooler way, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but I kind of... I, I didn't dislike the idea behind that one. Obviously, that they, obviously something that they... They, were, they got ambitious with Elizabeth, which is... At least obvious. It's and I'm one not, of the most ambitious games I've ever played, i got to be honest. Which I'm not sure if they totally got it, like, 100% to the way they wanted it, because I feel like I feel like there was a lot of this game that wasn't there, you know? 
I don't know. I don't know if I agree with whatever you're saying because you haven't actually said it yet. Well, because like, there are parts in the game that like it feels like things are just skipping ahead really fast. Mm. Especially in the middle act. I noticed in the end they kind of hit you all at once with a lot of stuff. Yeah. In the middle, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. I, you're saying the pacing is off? Not the pacing so much as it just... I guess what you're saying, there's a lot of stuff that happens very, very quickly. So I guess that would kind of be a pacing thing. Uh, I don't... It maybe, maybe. I don't know if I agree with this point. Like, I've heard uh, I've heard that there's a lot of stuff cut from this Who game. Who cares what you've heard? Tell me what you feel. I don't care if you read about people. No, I'm saying. just saying. You know, I revved up that R there. You read about it. Uh, I'm not. That, that's not what I'm saying, though. All I'm saying is that I've read that there was a lot of stuff cut out of this game um, because they didn't want to. Re- they didn't want to delay it anymore. There was apparently a lot of problems with the dev team. A lot of people left during its development. Uh, they had budgetary per- concerns. They spent a lot of money on this game and stuff. So, uh, no, I mean, I didn't think it was a bad game. I thought it was. I thought it was excellent. I thought it was like I can't. Unless Ground Zeroes comes out this year, which I'm not sure if it will or not, I can't think of a single game that's gonna that will be more of a game of the year than this one. No, I I can't even. I know once again I'm in the zone. I just beat it yesterday, guys. I'm in the absolute like still. See, that's why I'm, I'm not, in the well, Fallout not, zone. That's not why I'm not willing to uh, weigh in on the is it better or worse than the first Bioshock game because I did just beat it and it's very fresh in my mind. Um... I'm not sure what, how I would feel if I went back and played the first Bioshock, because obviously there's a lot of stuff that's different, but... It's just so much more grand, though. Because, like, the, here's what Bioshock 1 had going for it. Cool city. Pretty neat story. Like, real neat story. The story's great. And then you're, like, some good some good gameplay. This game is, like, a, it's just bigger and all those things. Yeah, but the thing about it is that... Uh, okay, well... how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of tiptoe around this. I liked the relative containedness of Bioshock 1's story, whereas the elements in Bioshock Infinite are far more grand and far more reaching. I liked the general kind of... Because it's the way it worked in um, uh, the Indiana Jones movie, um, uh, Temple of Doom. There, in that one, Indiana Jones, he wasn't trying to stop the Nazis from getting some artifact that would allow them to take over the world. He was trying to save a bunch of kids that were taken to a, you know, like a uranium mine. Okay. And that's, and, and I can appreciate that story because not everything has to be saving the world. And that's kind of, that's one, that's one thing I do very much feel as far as storytelling goes is that not everything has to be like super, super grand. And I'm not saying that Bioshock Infinite story, because of its grandness, was bad. All I'm saying is I certainly appreciated the very fairly limited scope of Bioshock 1. Because when we did our Bioshock 1 Let's Play, guys, one thing that I made very clear, at least from my opinion, was the fact that Bioshock 1 is about rapture. Whereas in Bioshock Infinite, the game is about uh, Booker and Elizabeth. Right. So there's a bar- So in that perspective alone, there's a huge shift between focuses. Because Bioshock One is much more Bioshock Infinite is much more character focused, where I feel Bioshock the first one is a lot more set focused. You're supposed to absorb Bioshock, and that's why I, that's why a protagonist like Jack works in there, because a lot of people said that um, they could their like immersion was broken because uh, you had a fully voiced protagonist in Bioshock Infinite, which is I bullshit. also said that at a few points. I, I I think that's stupid. I think you needed a f- well. I I said at the beginning of the game because. Sometimes his his opinions didn't match up to what my opinions were. Oh right, I forgot to talk about that in spoiler cast. I actually had an idea about that, but I'll call it later. Um, actually, no, it makes a ton of sense now I think about it. Yeah, because he's you know, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. now I'm happy. I'm happy again, guys. No, the thing is that like <laughs> that wouldn't have worked for Jack because it would have taken you out of experience in the game itself. But in Bioshock One, but in Infinite, where it's a lot more focused on the relationship between. Booker and Elizabeth and how that grows as the game progresses as they get to know each other become more acquainted with one another the fact that there's a voice there you couldn't you couldn't pull off some of the stuff that they had if you had a totally silent protagonist yeah because there's there's character growth in that they didn't have that at all in one yeah yeah and because you need to learn you need to learn more about the characters uh, specifically Elizabeth throughout the game and it's incredibly important I actually made a I actually made a, a blog part a blog particle I didn't know we were doing blog particles I actually made a blog article a few months back about how um, the difference between those kind of PCs, uh, like fully fleshed out voice PCs like Booker, as opposed to uh, silent PCs that don't really have a past, 
except for the one that they do, but don't really have a past like Jack was in the first Bioshock game. On, on our Rapture-like blog, which it used to be a utopia, now it's empty. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> a lot of crazy people there, though. A lot of crazy people. <laughs> okay. Well, that's that's all well and good. We, uh, you know, whatever. I, no one's saying n- y- whatever. What? I'm not sure what your point was there. Was it whatever? But let's let's try and let's try and get to the the nittier grittier. All right. Okay. Let's, t- let's talk about what we did in the game. What we, you know, how we played it. Yeah. Let's talk. Cause let's talk about mechanics. Cause because we can all talk about how you know what how the game's played or whatever. Whatever you know. What? Let's let's. You kind of you kinda boom it there. <laughs> hey, Dan, we'll talk about the way video games play, man. <laughs> Like okay, um, Will comes a French man. So we all know that there's guns and there's there's plasmids. Except it's not plasmids. Are there guns? There are definitely guns. Okay. So I wasn't sure. You're Booker T. Washington. You got your gun. You got your your magic powers. Your powers. You got a bunch of them, and you don't use most of the guns, and you don't use most of the vigors. That was a problem for me, um, because a lot of the vigors I don't care about at all, and a lot of the guns I don't care about at all. But I guess that's that's okay because having more of a choice isn't a problem for me. I just didn't use them. Oh, that was a bit. That was a big thing, uh, thing, guys. I might have already mentioned it, but there's a two gun limit in this game. Uh, in the other Bioshock games, you can carry all weapons all the time and yeah. just switch between them. In this game, you have a limit of two, and it's a Call of Duty style. Just switch out ones that you want, which some people complained about. I don't mind as much because I can't carry a lot of weapons personally. I think two would be pretty comfortable. In- I, it does. It, it. I understand that's it's less things to use. I mean, I can understand that being uh, people would rather have more than less, but. I don't feel like it was a problem. Yeah, I don't... I, I never was like, man, I wish I had that heater with me, because the heater blows. I don't want to use it. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude, what... a volley gun. Let's pick that up. God, don't even get me started on a volley gun. It's so bad. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's disgusting. <laughs> anyway. It's no RPG. It's no RPG. It's it's nothing. It's just, It might as well be shooting rubber balls. Boy. Okay, so... Um, personally, I, guys, Tom C, your boy. That guy over there. Uh, I used, for the most part, the hand cannon, which is a sweet revolver. Kind of looks like a Colt Dragoon. I don't think it is. It's a Colt Army, I think. They're, they look very similar. Yeah. And the sniper rifle, which, uh, don't let the name confuse you, it's an all-ranges rifle. Yeah, a normal difficulty, it's pretty much a one-hit kill on most minor enemies. Yeah, so I could, you, and, and the, and the, the reticule is so small that you can basically hit anywhere, anytime. And it's great. The accuracy is totally on. Like, the thing is, the shooting is really easy and it feels good. Like, the weapons are strong, and so that's nice. It's a lot of games like this where the enemies are just too hard to damage, and it takes too long, and it kind of gets frustrating. This game, they die, and I'm happy about it. Yeah, except in 1999 mode. And the plasmids I liked the most was Possession, which I constantly use. So if you watched our Let's Play, you know that I like Decoy and Enrage and stuff like that. Kind of fun- functions along that line of making the enemies do what you want for you and stuff. Yeah. And, but it, but with a cooler effect of after it's over, they suicide and kill themselves. For the themselves. most part, yeah. And it's like... mostly hilarious. Yeah, some of the guys beat themselves to death with either their clubs or their rifles. Some of them brutally shoot themselves three times with a machine gun. That's awesome. Some of them blow their heads off with shotguns. Some of the, yeah, they like actually like do like that sweet sh- samurai style stepping on the thing. Some of them just blow themselves off RGs and it's awesome. Guys, I know I don't Oh, that's the point I should have brought up before, but anyway. Um I will still bring it up. And the other plas the plasma. That's the point I should have brought up before. The other and I'll do it right bigger now. you use Vigor. <sighs> vigor they're called, guys. They call Sorry. them Vigors. Is charge I got into the most. Before then I was using Devil's Kiss, but charge ended up being my favorite. And that's just where it's just lunge from Bioshock Two, and except better in every single way. It's like lunge. It's like charge from Bioshock or er, uh, Mass Effect. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. It's loads of fun. It's awesome. Well, the point I was going to say that I briefly touched on, but I didn't touch on it at all. That I touched on me touching it. Okay. Okay. That, <laughs> was um, I want to make a point that this game really uh, in the gameplay there's juxtaposition pretty hard because you're like in such a wonderful place at first. And you're like, wow, this is all really pretty and stuff. And then there's brutal, brutal things happening with the fighting. Like the fighting is more brutal than the other games with like decapitations and like limbs blowing off and like heads blowing off and stuff like that, which wasn't really in the other games where you just like smack people with a wrench and they fly across. Yeah, that's true. They like, pretty in, much remain mostly intact. In this game, there's incredibly brutal, like, like just like Deaths. savage Deaths. beatings and killings and stuff like that. And it's to, juxt- it's to be juxtapositioned with the beautiful city of Columbia. Whereas in uh, Rapture was not beautiful, obviously. Well, it was at the time, but not when you're playing the game. So I'm talking about. That's right, what so I'm what did you about. use? 
Okay, guys. Here's I don't know if anyone cares about this, but I still like talking about it. Here's the thing. Here's how I went about the game, guys. Uh, for all, for the first like part of the game, I used the pistol a lot because the pistol just draw a rounder. I didn't like the pistol in the game. Uh, the pistol is very good. You're a fool for not using it. I didn't like it. It's fine. Fine. It's fine. I didn't use it. Uh, I used the pistol and I used uh, more pistol. I don't know. I didn't really have an alt weapon until I came across the carbine, which I used almost to the point of exclusion. Until I got the hand cannon, and then I used it in conjunction with the carbine. So I pretty much only used the carbine and the hand cannon, because those were the most all... all, Because the the carbine is essentially an upgraded pistol. Yeah. And you you see carbines all over the place. Yeah, they're pretty common, except for a few parts. Um, And then as far as vigors go, um, I used uh, Flock of Crows, or Murder of Crows. Uh, Sometimes I would use Murder of Crows, and occasionally if uh, there was an enemy who was immune to Murder of Crows... I would shoot it to death and hope that it would be dead so I could use more Murder of Crows. I'd I, shoot it until it gave into this crow business. <laughs> yeah. I shot it until it learned that it needed to be affected by crows. Otherwise, I would continue shooting it. Because <laughs> uh, uh, for those of you who did watch our Bioshock game, you know I love bees. Which crows are basically cooler bees. Co- yeah, crows are basically bees on steroids. True in real life, too. Yeah. Um, because you get the one upgrade that makes, them stun, get, it makes your enemies get stunned longer. Because the deal is, guys, with crows is... Enemies don't attack you and they take more damage, so that's, like, great. Yeah. Um, but the thing is that with one upgrade, they get stunned for longer, but with the other upgrade you get, uh, people who die while under the effects of crows turn into crow mines. It's the best. That was true of bees in the other game, too. Yeah. That's why we all love bees. <laughs> that's why we love bees. That's why we love bees. Um, yeah. That's- yeah. Uh, in this run, in my 999 mode... Uh, which I'm currently in the this middle guys of. This guy's is basically hardcore, super hard super, mode. Super duper hardcore mode. Uh, guys, just so you don't know, just if you don't know, uh, uh, 1999 mode is enemies deal 200% damage to you, you right. deal 50% damage to all enemies, Right. and every time you die, uh, you lose $100. And if you don't have $100, you get taken back to the main menu. Yeah. So it's pretty tough. It, and it's not a permadeath run you're telling me, though. No, because if you get taken back to the menu, you can just reload the ch- last checkpoint. Right. Which but, could be pretty far back. But Yeah. But um, in this mode, I've ended up using... Well, I actually am achievement hunting in this one, so I've been actually switching it up. <laughs> I don't think this is the run for achievement hunting, I'll tell you that. Well, probably not. But I've gotten <laughs> quite a few, actually. Uh, I've really actually been a lot more varied in this one, just because I've uh, been trying to get achievements for all the weapons. I've been using the RPG a lot. I've learned that the sniper rifle is incredibly good. because it's really good. No, because even in, even in 1999 mode, uh, on most minor enemies, a headshot will kill instantly. Yeah. So you're just like... Gadoosh. <laughs> Real key is once you get one upgrade for it, it reloads super fast. Yeah. There's like, bleep, and that's it. It's great. Yeah, there's a shotgun upgrade like that too. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So, but yeah, 1999 sucks dicks, guys. It's really hard. I'm, I'm gonna play it probably pretty like the, soon, the, uh, uh, like most enemies are all right. Then handymen are ridiculously strong. Yeah, handymen are hard in the, in the original and they would suck hard in this one too, I bet. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Guess what? They totally do. Okay, so let's. Do you you said this might be sort of a review style thing? How, what what's your? Let's just not let's not get too into it. Okay. What's your overall feelings with the game? Oh, I, I th- said right off the top of the bat. I think right it, off I, the top of the bat. You know, you got a bat off the top of it. That's how that's how up forward it was. Imagine the show is a bat. Okay. Now the, the top of the bat's face to the left at the beginning. Yeah. Now a little bit off from that. That's where I first started talking about this. Fair enough. Okay. Right now we're near the end of the bat. Um, but we're I said the, end of the first half of the bat. Well, yeah, it's two bats. We got two bats. Anyway, the thing is, um, I, I I I can't imagine myself not thinking this one's better than the original Bioshock. Um, I just I, I had fun the entire way through. Nothing felt frustrating or tedious, which I definitely felt the first time in two, and I I think I probably felt it at times in one. Nothing here felt tedious. Uh, there's some parts with backtracking, but that's optional. Um, yeah, and I don't really mind that as much. I don't really mind that as much either. Most of the times you're backtracking, you're finding something new in an area, but uh, those are still optional. And so there's nothing that's really tedious or, or irritating like that. And so I got to be honest, it's going to be hard for any game to take this place out of game of the year. Yeah, uh, def- that's point. that's why I feel. Guys, um, thing about this game is, um, for those of you who don't know, I do like Bioshock 2. Um, I also like it. The thing about this game is that it definitely 
uh, really kind of makes Bioshock 2 look not so great. Like, it makes it look like a really obvious cash grab, which, uh, like, because, <laughs> cause, like, tell me I'm wrong, though. No, I can't. Because you're just like... Because you see, you see what, what a true Ken Levine sequel would yeah. have been. You, you see, like, what he wanted to do. Because, well, here's the thing. I think a lot of the stuff from um, 2 was actually, like, I think they kind of took a lot of the stuff of, like, what originally kind of Infinite was planned about. Because the whole uh, lamb, the whole, like, the child Maybe. is the key to the city. Yeah. I feel like they kind of Van buren it a little bit, you know what I'm sort saying? Sort of. Yeah. I, I, and I have nothing to confirm that, but I just kind of noticed the I see what you're saying. Because I did notice it while I was playing it. Yeah. But you're totally right, though, because it really shows that, like, when they're given time, like, what he actually wants to do and make. Yeah. Like I said, guys, I'm not willing to pass judgment about whether or not I think it's better than the first one, just because I don't think it would be entirely fair, because I haven't played the first one in a while. But it's definitely a serious contender, like you we played, said. You played it at least in the last year. You've seen it played in the last year. Yeah, that's true. But I, you got to play it yourself, man. I don't know, you man. You know that's how it works. This game's even longer than the first one. Like, it's in every way, it's grander and bigger and better. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. It's even more guns, I think. Yeah, that's true. There's less plasmids, though. Yeah. So, and you don't have to worry about gene tonics, which everyone hated anyway. No, everyone did hate this anyway. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, short version. I don't care what your financial status is. You're going to buy the game. You might be saying, But, Tom... I don't even have any food. I don't care. There's food in the game. <laughs> in the game. You get hot dogs all over the place. Cotton, Let me tell you how funny it is. Cotton candy. Every time you open up a briefcase and it only has cotton candy in it. Because it happens a lot. <laughs> no, the best is like when you... The best is like... You're like, oh, dude, in this man's uh, coin purse is a hot dog. No, <laughs> I, I, I always love when you're like, let's see what's in this trash can. Oh, is that a hot dog in that trash can? <laughs> Let's scarf this down. Oops, it's a hot dog. I gotta eat that whole thing. I gotta eat it right now. <laughs> but anyway, seriously. Uh, it, My it, mouth's open. Of course the hot dog needs to go in there. <laughs> this is one of the first times in a long time where I feel like a $60 uh, game is totally worth $60. Like, I, I was worried when I bought it, I was gonna be like, this isn't, I didn't get my money's worth out of this because it was only like however long. I felt like I got my money's worth on the first playthrough. It's so good. Well, that's the thing is that I think uh, also this game warrants a lot more replay than Bioshock 1 did. I, I 100% agree with that. Uh, guys, if you don't know what we mean, you have to beat the game first. Yeah, guys. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a quick break, yeah, and we're sure going to come back not talking about Bioshock. If you can believe it. Ready, fight. Welcome to the show part two. Guys, welcome back to the Sons of Radio podcast. Guys. It's my new theme. Do you like it? How often do you wake up in a crisp fall Tuesday Bed morning? Bed of lettuce. Oh. And he says it's time for suns. It probably happened during fall. But yeah. now it's not fall anymore. It's now spring. It's spring, finally. What do we say about springs here in Sun Cat Town? That means it's time... To unveil the new Sun Spring Cleaning Kit. Absolutely. Guys, we at the Suns are going to deliver straight from our mobile super base to your kitchens and bathrooms and just regular rooms the harshest and most destructive and corrosive of chemicals to make spring, spring cleaning debris. Here's what I always hear. I hear Tom C., you're a great looking guy. Yeah, of I hear that all the of time. Of course. But I also hear Tom C., how do you get the base so clean like that? And the answer is, I don't. Of course I'm not a janitor. I'm on a show right now. Janitors don't do shows. Janitors clean things. The janitors would tell you that if you asked them. So why don't you Seems go ask weird them. that you'd go to the him first. Yeah, kind, I'm kind of a big shot, guys. So go to... he. No, he's got an important job. But ask him how he does it, all right? I know, ask me about podcasts. Tom, I know a lot of people, they come up to me and they say, D Marks, you're substantially better looking than Tom C. And I say, of course. But then they also say... <laughs> they, have to, they have to say that to your face, obviously. Then they also say, it's remarkable how clean and, and fresh smelling the base is. And I'm like, thank you. I just farted 78 times. <laughs> but there's no way you'd know because of the fresh butler, robo butler. 
I have people come up to me and say, Tom C., you're clearly the most attractive man I've ever seen. That kid keeps farting. All right? It's gross. How do you live with that stank? And the answer is because I just manage somehow. I don't know. It's terrible. I've gotten used to it, I guess. Also, the janitors. They got the supplies. They got these chemicals that somehow can erase that hellish bum odor that, like, Uranus-style super smell, not of this world. See, I don't know how they do it. See, Tom, the thing is, I have people come up to me all the time, and they say, I did what you asked. I said Tom C's better looking than you. Now his feelings won't be hurt. But you know how I really feel. But then after they're done saying that, they say, I also know that he was the one who farted, and you're just trying to cover for him to be polite. And I, I think that's really nice of you. You're the sweetest man I've ever met. Do they say anything about cleaning? Then they say, you would never know that Tom C. farted so much because it smells so clean in the base. Well, a lot of people say, Tom C., is D. Marks as big of a liar as he acts? We all know the answer is yes. That's all they say, though. I don't, that's not what? really. I don't think that really is anything It's not really related cleaning, to though. cleaning. So they ask me, I guess, I know some people the next question is they, they wonder say, about the cleaning. They know. say, Tom C.'s a real jerk. He likes making stuff up. You're the real. No one's ever said that. You're, you're the real. That up. You're the real champ. World champ, number one, number one podcast man, D Marks. Um, no one also one's, no good cleaning. No one's ever said that, but they have asked me for a cleaning kit. That's true, and they also asked me for that too. That's why we're bringing you the but Tom C is the better looking one cleaning kit. The super D duper Tom C, not as great as D Marks, a spring clean kit. It comes. I don't with, think I approved that name. <laughs> It comes with one destructor that. battle robot for destroying things germs, that you don't want anymore. Maybe, yeah, germs. German people. Uh, a fifty gu- a fifty gallon drum of sulfuric acid. That's for a lot of things. That's not just for cleaning. It's multi-purpose. Multi-purpose. Yeah, it's got a lot of uses. Um, it comes with fire in a can, which true. you may not have known was a thing. It does come with that. Uh, two uh, two five pound bricks of C four. Absolutely, nothing cleans like C four. Yeah, um, a, a plasma disintegrator. Yes. Yes. It's for breaking down boxes and stuff, mostly. It comes with a, a phone that calls Ghost Rider, who mm-hmm. cleans with fire. Uh, the world's sharpest katana. Yes, that's for that's for cutting the germs off. Yeah. And, uh... It comes with a sponge made out of the universe. The true universe. Interesting. Absorbs everything. It's like a black hole. Yeah, yeah. But faster. It's a singularity sponge. It's our new thing. We've made it, and it cost a lot of lives. Yeah. Um, Tom, and it's going to cost you a lot you, of money. Tom, what would you expect to pay for a kit that does all these I things? I wouldn't expect to pay anything. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> you don't have to laugh that out loud to that. What would you pay for it, Mr. I need to pay for cleaning supplies? Oh, well, I'm just so handsome that I get everything. I get most of the things that yeah. I get for free. Yeah. They probably do it to get you away from them. But for the average so, show, for the average schlub, how much do you think they would expect? I'm going to put it at a reasonably priced two hundred dollars. What? That's way too high. Go lower. No, I don't want to. You must though, because okay. I how about I... fifty bucks? Even lower than that. Twenty bucks. Lower. Forty-five cents. Tom, you can have this wondrous product. What you mean? Number? We get a bunch of stuff. It's like a kit. Well, yeah, it's a kit. The kit is the product. Okay. You get all this wondrous product for only. Five easy payments of a single dollar. Over what period of time? Uh, five seconds. <laughs> you can pay it all in advance if you if you have what, to. What if you mess it up? Do they take it back? Yeah, yeah. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Well, you did the one a little too fast there. Thank goodness. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, this spring, make cleaning a uh, hellish nightmare. <laughs> For germs. Suns, for germs. For germs. With the new Suns cleaning kit. Make a, the Vietnam of germs is upon us. <laughs> Make sure your germs have nowhere to hide. <laughs> With the Suns cleaning kit. Is that what it's called? Yes. The Suns cleaning kit. The uh, Asterix and D-Mark's better looking. Number one. There's guy. a lot of asterisks. I, yeah. get, I get a cross. Because mm, it's like mm. the second asterisk. The, I get, but it's the one you actually pay attention to. I get the daggers. That's why they have a I get the daggers. Because daggers are cooler. Oh, yeah. Dude. Next product we got to make. Little swords for drinks. I hate. I hate to tell you. You already did. Yeah. Well, I should have got on that, guys. Anyway, guys, what right now are you talking about? Because here's the deal, guys. So I finally got around to watching the trailers for Phantom Pain. Because I clockwork orange style held your eyelids open and tied you to a chair. Literally five minutes ago. Yeah. Well, not literally. Uh, yeah, guys. Uh, we watched 
We we just right before this section of the podcast, we sat down, we shotgunned the trailer, the original trailer that they released like last year, and some gameplay footage. And let me tell you, the game looks like nuts. Games like guys, Tom, if, if if I would say that if if uh, the Metal Gear Solid was some kind of uh, coat that was on some kind of hook, I would say it would be off the hook. Um, well, it's more of like a, like, I'm kind of thinking of it more as like a phone. Okay. And if you could think about like a phone, like maybe an older one. Okay. It's off of that hook. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Because here's the deal, guys. Or, well, let's see, I think it's more along the lines of a lucky fish. A lucky fish that got off the what? hook. Oh, there's, okay. But, yeah. So you got a fish on a hook, right? Well, yeah, it started on the hook. Right. It was, but it, it was, was lucky. It was lucky. And then it got away. So now it's off the hook. Yeah, now it's off the hook. All right. Yeah. I can kind of see that. Anyway, guys, no. Kind of uh, like someone who is... <laughs> I linked it on the... I linked the the trailer that just came out a few like a few weeks ago. I linked that on the Facebook page. So if you don't know what we're going to be talking about, I suggest you go take a look at that uh, if you have the availability. Tom, let's go... Here's... You want my first opinions on it? Go right ahead. Just cut me off. <laughs> guys, I'm scared. Yeah. Uh, I got to be honest... This is this one looks like a mind f. Like you, you maybe you were a little bit whack a dude with two or whatever. Yeah, two would definitely be the most whack a dude. But like, like maybe you saw trailer three and you're like, we're in the war in the jungle. That's neat. Maybe four, you're like, this seems pretty heavy. This one, you're like, no, no. Yeah, because uh, there's no fun in this game. No, it's all bad. Because here's the thing, guys. The thing about this game is it takes place pretty much like right after Peace Walker, uh, or at least the first part, which we'll get into. Uh, but it takes place right after Peace Walker. We talked about this a little bit in the other episode. We talked about what I was thinking was happening. Oh. Did we? No, I don't remember that at all. So. Nice. That was like one week ago. Nice. Uh, it was two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, it takes place right after Peace Walker, and basically it kind of is definitely going to be dealing with big bosses kind of fall into uh, kind of villainy, more or Pure less. Pure evil? Yeah. Uh, he's not, a, he becomes a bad guy. Not guys. giving an F anymore. Because maybe y'all forgot, but he's kind of the main bad guy of the first game. Metal yeah. Gear. Yeah, the first one. I he's think kind he comes of the... back for Metal Gear 2 Snake's Revenge, which yeah, technically isn't canon, but whatever. Who cares? Um, but no. Uh, yeah, so basically this is going to be big bosses uh, going from, I'm just a happy mercenary who wants to see everything that the boss... Certainly isn't happy in, in Peace Walker. Well, I'm just a mercenary who wants to make sure that the boss is remembered, blah, 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 blah. In this game, it's like, everything's going to be dead because I'm going to engulf the world in war. Like, all the people who were, you know, maybe maybe treated bad by the boss in the past, they're done. They're done with that. They're done being messed with. Yeah. <laughs> like, basically, everyone's everyone's calling calling the favor on him. Everyone's done. They're pulling the plug on that. No, because, like, the thing is, uh, there's a lot of... Um, Explosions? No, that's not what I was going to say. There's a lot of uh, ruse, rusefulness on Kojima's part, because he was talking about how... Well, like, when, Fan, when the original trailer for Phantom Pain, Pain first came out, it was being developed by a game studio called Moby Dick Studios, which no one ever heard about, because it doesn't exist. It was a, a joke. Because it's fake, fake studio? Is it a thing that doesn't fictional, exist? Fictional fake And that's what was all the stuff with uh, Joaquin Mogren. Which we talked about. Yeah, we talked about him a little bit. Uh, they actually showed the mask, because it was Kojima the whole time. So they showed the mask. The bottom part was like Kojima's face, but like the top part with like the eyes is like a mask part. And they showed Weird! It. Yeah. I They're, don't like that one bit. Yeah, it's really creepy looking, the, the pictures. Dude, have you ever actually s- sat down and watched that video where they interviewed nope. him? Nope. No, that's real weird. Not going to do it. No, it's it's really creepy. Regardless, um... Why do I have to play this game to be creepy, Doubt? I don't want to be creeped. Uh, but the game is already so creepy, for the most part. I don't want creepy. Two. Two was the creepiest game there was. Two was the creepiest Metal Gear, and it's my favorite. Yeah. But regardless, um, yeah. But basically, the allegories to uh, Moby Dick are basically the idea that um, Big Boss is kind of getting in a happy and obsession with destroying Zero... Because Zero is consistently fucking with him and refuses to leave Big Boss alone. So now Big Boss is pulling out all the stops. Yeah. Um, there's a guy in the gameplay trailer that we watched. Uh, his, his face is all bandaged up. Not unlike Joaquin Mogren. No, it was exactly like that. Yeah. Um, and he introduces himself as Ishmael, which if any of you knows the first line of Moby Dick, you will know that the narrator is Ishmael. Because as you know, Moby Dick goes, call me Ishmael. Some scene about hand washing, then sixty pages about eating. 
Then there's maybe a little bit of talk 120 about... 120 pages about false information regarding whales that, that, that they knew at the time was then wrong. Then maybe, if you're lucky, somebody talks to Ahab, but then that doesn't even happen. Then 600 pages later, somebody dies. Yeah. But no. The first part is is Ishmael, and Ishmael is, is, uh, watches Ahab's descent into madness, or his continued descent into madness. So there's a lot of speculation... And how that works out for him. There's a lot of speculation about who Ishmael is... Some people might think that Kojima's trying to pull another ride in. Right. That Ishmael might be who you actually play as in some capacity. Which is why they didn't want to show his face in the trailers. Yeah. Um, some people think it might be Gray Fox, but I don't think that's the case because the time period seems off. Yeah. Oh, guys. Uh, the whole thing about the trailer is that uh, basically Phantom Pain is divided into two separate kind of games. The first one is Ground Zeroes, which was the one that was originally announced. And Ground Zeroes acts as a kind of prologue to the Phantom Pain. Um, it's going to be a lot longer than the other prologues, like the Tanker Missions and the uh, um, Virtuous Mission from 2 and 3, respectively. It's going to be much more fleshed out. Apparently there's going to be base building involved. So it sounds like it's more or less kind of like a full game. But it's like really the first episode of the two parts that will make up Metal Gear Solid Five. Right. And the second part, which is the Phantom Pain, is after Big Boss has been a co- Cobra... He's been a cobra for nine years. Co- okay, he's not a cobra. He's been in a coma for nine years. <laughs> I was like, wait, there's actually something that is the cobra unit. He's been in a coma for nine years. Um, at the ta- at, and during the uh, gameplay trailer, they show basically Mother Base, which was Big Boss's base during Peace Walker, gets totally destroyed by a bunch of dick bags. Totally destroyed is putting it lightly. Yeah, it gets annihilated. It gets wiped from the map. Like it's getting totally bombed and it's on fire and everything's bad and everyone's dying. Yeah. So, it's getting massacred. It's so, like, like you don't need to understand. It's not just like, and then it's gone. It's like we're brutally doing this, the assaulting the earth. Yeah, we're totally killing people in cold blood. Yeah. Um. So the Phantom Pain is going to take off nine years after the events of Ground Zeroes, uh, and that's Big Boss, who we who who we expect to be Big Boss waking up from a coma. Yeah. There's a lot of. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of speculation about this game, especially on V, which I've I've been looking around a lot because I'm very interested about it. Uh, a lot of things might come to fruition in this game, like the formation of the original Foxhound unit is possible. Uh, it's probably pretty likely. Um, there's talk that you might play as Solidus. That's uh... There's got to be something involving La Enfant Terrible. Yeah, because... There the, has to be. The La Enfant Terrible project took place in 72. The Adventure Peace Walkers took place in 74. So by then, actually, Liquid and Sol- Solid and Liquid Snake were already born. Remember, they age fast, too. Yeah. So there's got to be something related to that. Um, you're not, not like you're going to fight your own kid or something, but... No, but there is... There's... Yeah. A lot of people... What a lot of people want... Is the last boss fight in Phantom Pain to be a bo- uh, fight against Solid Snake that you can't win? Because that'd be like awesome. Like, as in Metal Gear? Yeah, like you're a big boss. I hope that, I just, I still hope they just remake Metal Gear uh, into, like, a good, like, a real big, yeah. not 8-bit game. That'd be so awesome. Metal Gear 1 and 2. Yeah, I don't know what they're planning on doing with the franchise after this one, but definitely... We always hear it's over. That's what we always hear. Yeah, that's true. But I think I think I think Kojima is really trying to trying to move on. I think he's trying to continue on the Metal Gear franchise by moving it over to the uh, uh, um, American um, franchise of uh, Kojima Productions. But I think he's not going to have as much personal involvement. That's what he always says. Yeah, he can't, he can't keep his finger out though. He loves it. He that's loves true. it. Uh, also, guys, uh, David Hayter is not coming back to voice Big Boss, which we all think is a big lie. Well, no, we all think it's. Uh, either, well, we all think it's either a lie or he's going to be voicing Snake. Solid Snake. Yeah. He's got, he, you can't have a, a Metal Gear Solid game without David Hayter. That's, be- that's the, all there is to that. Because the, um, the, the voice actor who will be uh, doing Big Boss, at least in Phantom Pain, uh, will be, uh, Richard Doyle, who did Solidus, his voice in two. And hosted Doyle's World. Yeah. Classic, classic 90s Nickelodeon live action show. Yeah. Um, but he also voiced Big Boss in the super secret uh, cutscene at the end of uh, Metal Gear Solid 4. He was also uh, Pius the Centurion in Eternal Darkness. I didn't. I did maybe know that. Yeah, there are a lot of people who worked at, who worked on Metal Gear Solid who worked on that game. Guys, secretly, because uh, it's Silicon Knights. Because yeah. uh, uh, Pro Tip, we're totally gonna play that at some point, guys. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, 
That's 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 the the bones, the bare bones of of the Metal Gear Solid stuff that we know so far. Yeah, uh, guys, once again, watch the trailers uh, because it's crazy. Confirmed for having ocelot. Confirmed for giant flaming whales. Confirmed for horses. Here's what I think, guys, uh, and no one's gonna agree with me, but it's just a real early game uh, hypothesis. All of it's a hallucination. The whole game. No, like everything you see in the trailer. Oh, like everything that like, everything basically that can't be explained. Everything that seems unreal or extreme, yeah, is a hallucination. Because like you see, basically Phantom or not what? What's his name? Volgan. Mantis. Oh yeah, Mantis. Psycho Mantis. You basically see what he looks like. Who he acts exactly the same way as Psycho Mantis did in one. No, it's pretty much confirmed that it's Mantis. And so you see him, and so you're like, eh. but like back then, there's no way Psycho Mantis could be alive. But anyway, well, maybe. Regardless, it's the crazy things that, like, couldn't, that, you, it could easily be, I'm sorry, guys, I'm hard, I'm a bad talker. It could easily be Psycho Mass making people hallucinate, like, you know, he always does. Yeah, that's kind of his thing. Kind of, he was probably pretty good at it back then. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, it'll be... Is, is there a release date? No, nobody's talked about it. There's, because I don't think, they're not being released at the same time. Yeah. Um, Ground Zeroes might come out this year, but I think Phantom Pain is going to be a next-gen release. It, it, the graphics are really good. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, now that you've told me that it's actually, like, Ground Zero is longer. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be, like, some As long as it's not, like, game. virtuous mission length, that's 17 minutes. No, 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 no. It's going to be definitely longer than that. Okay, because then maybe we have a talk. Dude, uh, speculation that uh, Chico is going to be killed. Uh, luckily, I didn't like Chico. <laughs> uh, no, th- there's... Uh, good... I didn't like Chico. I've got a good feeling a lot of people are going to be killed. Yeah. There's a lot. Because here's the deal, guys. Whenever you have a, a situation like this where you have a guy who generally seems all right becoming pure evil, who, like, child soldiers and, like, basically... Oh, that's... Yeah, that's a whole big thing. That's pretty important. Here's the deal, guys. Um, So, at the tail end of the trailer, uh, Big Boss or possibly Solonis, who knows? Um, He's wearing a new uh, jacket that has the insignia for Diamond Dogs on it. And a sweet motorcycle. Yeah, it's a sweet motorcycle jacket. Vroom, vroom. Right, guys? You know what I'm saying? And a robo-arm. Oh, yeah. But, um, a cooler robo-arm than in the trailer. The dog, the dog that's featured on the logo is a Rhodesian Ridgeback. So there's a lot of talk that possibly uh, Phantom Pain might be taking place in Africa, which would be kick-ass. <laughs> be totally right. No, because I... I Remember I, Zanzibar land, I do guys? a lot of... I've, I've researched a lot about the, like, the Bush Wars in Africa. Actually, did anyone talk about Zanzibar land? Did they? In the trailer, is no, there? No, 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 no. Really? No. Because this would be the time. Well, yeah, that's what that's what they think. He might be building Outer Heaven or Zanzibar Land or something like that. Cause Zanzibar, oh, yeah, I forgot, Outer, I forgot Outer Heaven was not Mother Base. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Because Zanzibar Land is, is its own nation in Metal Gear Solid. Okay. Or in the Metal Gear... Uh, so he had Mother Base. It's going to get destroyed. Now he's going to build a new one. Yeah, basically. That's even more evil. Probably. Well, but no, the thing is that, like... There's a lot of speculation that the reason that they're called the Diamond Dogs is because they trade in blood diamonds a lot. Because that's what you do Surprised when you're burp. that's when you do when you're an African warlord. Do you have blood diamonds all the time? Yeah, uh, and that they you have, like child soldiers and stuff. So it's gonna be nuts. I literally like now that Bioshock's out and I played it and I've gotten all the like I've, I've I'm gushing over Bioshock. Yeah, this is this is the next this thing. Is, this is the this new is the next thing. thing on the run. Oh, dude, major disappointment. Metro got pushed back to the end of the year. I don't have time to care about Metro. I know, that's the problem. <laughs> I know we're all jazzed, but I don't have time. Here's what's still important to me. Okay. Metal Gear, Rome 2, which is going to blow doors down. Did Company of Heroes 2 come out? Company of Heroes 2 is going to be rad. Did it come out? I thought it was supposed to be out no, by now. No, I would have known. I would have known. Um, and there's something else that's really sweet coming out. Uh, is it Mountain Blade? Actually, yes, Mountain Blade's coming out, but that's all I was talking Is it a kitten doing backflips? Come on, man. Where can't you see that? I don't remember what it was, but really, now that we now that I've watched those trailers, I'm incredibly excited, but also scared. Yeah, it, it's it's a little creepy, guys. I don't... Like, it's like in the other trailers, you're like, snakes eating a fish. In this one, it's like, snake is crippled, and he's getting rocked. Everything is bad. Everyone's... Hating their lives. Like, what? why can't we just sneak around and have funny names? What happened to that? Everyone was I think, happy. And I think that went out the window in two. When there was one, everyone was happy. Because it's a funny name. His name was like a penis thing. 
And then in two, everyone's like, it's going to be more penis jokes. And then it's not that. And then in three, they're back to the penis jokes. Everyone's happy. And then four, they're out of it again. Yeah. Now there's no... Actually, there is kind of penis jokes. Because it's old snake. <laughs> yeah. Now nobody's making penis jokes. No. And we didn't even say one penis joke yet. What a dick. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, do you do, do yourself a favor and email us. Guys, send that's video the greatest joy that you can experience. At gmail.com. What a treat you'll get. Oh, we'll respond you, and you'll be like, we'll even autograph your email somehow. When you see that uh, name coming into your email box, you're going to be you like, You open wow. up your inbox and you see a son's video email waiting for you. Oh, man. That's going to make your day. When Let you me see tell that you. precious EM, you're going to have your mind blown, guys. So good. Oh, yeah. It's just I want to give a big shout out to somebody who actually helped us out. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, TG Pyro guy. is his YouTube name, and that's what he'll go as on here. Helping us out, send us an email with some help. Appreciate that. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what, because it's it'll pay extremely off for you guys super legal. Soon. Guys, yeah, we love that. If you didn't know that we have a Facebook page, we do. Where we post things that are actually useful to what we're talking about, yeah. if you can believe I actually, it. Like I said, I posted the trailer. Uh, the other week I posted Metal Gear Solid. Um, some pictures relating to the thing we're talking about, Phantom Pain and Metal Gear Solid stuff. So guys, it's not just us being like, hey guys, what video games do you like? Or posting dumb memes. We're better than that, guys, and you're better than that. Yeah, we're all better than that. We're not going to F with you. We post stuff that matters. Like funny jokes. Wait, they never. We never posted a joke on there. Yeah, that's a lie. But we would don't, never don't do lie that. to don't lie to the people. Um, guys, rate us on iTunes. It helps a lot. Yeah, and don't be afraid to write a review. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of anything. Yeah, dude. We're here to accept you, dude. You know what else that they should accept from us? I don't know. Speed, Speed reviews. reviews. Tom, this is the top ten most unexpected games in a series. What? Number ten, Metroid Prime for the GameCube. In Metroid Prime, you're playing as Optimus Prime, the first Metroid. He's a robot, he's a truck, ten out of ten. They are doing nuts and bolts. This is a hard-hitting game about the life in a mental institution as Banjo and Kazooie must overcome the horrors of schizophrenia and another mental illness. It's a two out of ten. Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 is the only Resident Evil game most people have ever played and will ever need to play. Ten out of ten. Fantasy Star Online. In this game, you get to pretend that you're playing on a star on a computer online. It's totally nuts. 10 out of 10. Kelowna Beach Volleyball. Kelowna Beach Volleyball, you're a cat with a hat with a hairdo who likes to fly with his ears, I guess. I don't know how that helps a volleyball player, but I gotta imagine it's useful. 10 out of 10. Luigi's Mansion. Mamma Mia, there are ghosts everywhere. I gotta suck them up with this vacuum. 9 out of 10. Uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog is Sonic's brother. He likes to run around just as fast. But he's got a gun where he shoots uh, the Sonics, the Hedgehogs, until they're all blue. Whatever. One out of ten. Dirge of Cerberus. Final Fantasy VII. Uh, in Dirge of Cerberus, you have to compose a dirge. Uh, you don't know that you're secretly writing for your rival, Salieri, but it ends up taking the toll, and you, then you end up dying. Uh, it gets a Mozart out of ten. Uh, number two, Metal Gear Acid. Metal Gear Acid was secretly awesome. Also had a really hot girl in it, who I don't remember the name of. So it's got to get to 12 out of ten. Mega Man Battle Network. Go to the Battle Network. I was going to say, Tom really likes this game a lot, so I'm going to give it an 11 out of 10 just for him. Nice. All right, guys. We'll we see you next it. week. I hope you enjoyed all the stuff. Thank you.